Hey guys, what's up? Spectre here, and I just wanted to give some of my early impressions of Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, I've been playing it for quite a few hours on end. I have barely gotten up um, from in front of my PlayStation, and it has been a pleasure the entire time. Um, I have really great first impressions of this game. I'm very, very impressed that this is from Guerrilla Games. Um, I was late to the Killzone franchise, and I wasn't all of that... I wasn't really um, impressed by the final installments in Killzone. It was just a shooter to me, and a very standard, um, very run-of-the-mill shooter. It wasn't bad. Uh, it was beautiful, but it was just... Yeah, it was good. You know? It was just one of those games where it was like, oh, okay. Um, but this is... It, it blows my perception of Guerrilla Games out of the water. Um, from a, a storytelling aspect, uh, the story really pulls you in um, to just the gameplay mechanics and little things that they picked up from other games, but ways that they made them even better um, are just great. So I'm going to try not to spoil anything. I'm just going to try to tell you what is in the game, because I think that's what a lot of people's concern is before they pick something up, is, you know, what am I going to be doing? What is the gameplay loop? Um, what is in the game? So, to start off, uh, this is third person, as you've probably seen. It's always third person. It doesn't do that sort of hybrid where sometimes it'll switch if you aim a certain weapon, like a bow or something like that. It's always in third person. Um... It is very crafting heavy, so you're going to be crafting all your ammunition. You're going to be crafting uh, the pouches that hold that ammunition, sort of like Far Cry. Um, and your inventory is expandable through crafting. Um, so it's a very craft heavy game. You'll go throughout the game world and see, you know, um, little things pop up to show like here's, you know, this thing that you need. Here's this kind of berry to make whatever, um, you know concoction to heal yourself or to uh, resist a certain damage type or here's the kind of wood that you need to make arrows um, you'll see it around the game world and if you're the kind of person that likes picking that stuff up and stopping every five seconds to gather supplies like I do then you'll probably um, love that um, aside from that there are merchants in the game where you can buy new weapons uh, that are new weapon types and also of better quality um, with different slots to upgrade your weapons you can buy outfits um, so in this game, in terms of armor, you're not upgrading your boots or your helmet or whatever. You're getting entire outfits, and these outfits are for stealth players, for um, sort of combat-oriented players, for ranged players. Like, it'll say what the perks are and what kind of style of play it complements, and you pick based on that. Um, so that, that was personally one of my biggest questions about the game was about the armor. So that's kind of out of the way. It's just outfits, and you buy them... And yeah, uh, one really cool thing about that is that in the game, if you cannot afford an item, you can hit square and it'll create, um, there's quests in this game, side quests and errands. Errands are just little things that you can do for people and it'll usually help you in some way, shape or form. Um, and basically it'll create an errand and it'll say, all right, this is what you need to be able to trade for that item that you want. Here's a good place to go find that. Um, so it'll, it'll be like, uh, a certain amount of in-game currency and this piece of technology from this robotic creature. Here's where you find that robotic creature, go get it and come back. It's, it's really cool. Um, that way players can set their own goals for what they want to, uh, you know, the kind of loadout that they want, and then they can go out and they can get it, and they know exactly where to go, and they're not ambling around for hours. So I really like that mechanic. Um, aside from that, the storytelling is a little bit linear. Um, you're kind of, you can go off and do whatever you want, um, but I've been playing it in a, in a sort of linear fashion because, uh, the story is really well paced, uh, and it keeps you wanting to find out the next piece of the puzzle. This game is about unlocking secrets as you've seen from a lot of the trailers. So it, it makes you want to continue on with those quests rather than going off and doing a lot on your own, but you will be doing a lot of your own thing. There's a lot to explore in this game. Um, and the... The in-game world is it's huge. It's huge. Um, I didn't know how to fast travel when I first started playing, so I was like, crap, do I really have to walk all this way? Um, and it has an interesting mechanic where you have to create an item that allows you to fast travel. You have to create a fast travel bag, which is a essentially a bag that would be full of the supplies for you to travel with. Um, you craft one of those, and that's a one-way trip to wherever you want to go. Um, there are certain campfires that you discover on the map, sort of like Tomb Raider. 
Um, and then you can fast travel to that campfire, and it uses up that travel bag. Now, you can make more, um, but it does take your resources, so you have to pick and choose, like, how far am I going to fast travel, how often? Um, and I think that's cool, because it, it creates this cool balance where you can choose to fast travel, but you can save your supplies and go experience the world a little bit more. And not to spoil too much, because it's, it's tied to the narrative, but you can also get mounts later. Um, and, and I, I don't want to go too much into that. I'd like to keep some sort of surprise around that for the players. Um, but there are mounts, so you, that's, that's an option as well. Um, I'm trying to see what else, what other concerns would people have? I, I've said, yeah, there's, there's quests, side quests, and errands. You find dynamic quests throughout the world when you come across NPCs. Um, and there's also, like, lively towns and cities and outposts that you can find. Um, so far I haven't encountered many cities. Um, I've, in, I've encountered one, and I'm on my way to my to the second one, and that's supposedly a, a large city, so I'm, I'm excited to see that. But, um, but yeah, it, it's one of those. It's where you can go throughout the game world, and then you can go back to this place where there's a bunch of traders. There's um, a lot of world building. It's a really cool, lively-feeling place, um, so, so there's that. Um, that was another one of my personal concerns is how that was going to go. Um... There's another really cool uh, mechanic called flashpoints, and these are points in the story where you can react. You basically choose what kind of a person Aloy is. Are, are you going to be angry and vengeful? Are you going to be caring and, and nice to people? Are you going to uh, use your brains to outwit people? Um, so basically, something will happen, and I, I'm not going to... I'll give you the first one. It doesn't spoil anything crazy. Um, I, I'll be super vague about it. So, someone throws a rock at you, your choice is A, throw the rock back at his face, <laughs> throw the rock at his hand, knocking it out of his hand, or drop the rock and confront him. Um, you know, the first hitting him in the face with it being the mean choice, the knocking the rock out of his hand, making him look like an idiot, being the sort of, you know, outsmarting him choice, and the last one being the compassionate choice and not fighting back like that. Um... So you basically get to choose who Aloy is, and these flashpoints happen throughout the story. Um, there are also dynamic conversations with people in sort of the way of Fallout. Um, actually, it reminds me a lot of Fallout. Uh, but yeah, where you ask them certain questions, it branches, you get different things, you can go backwards in the conversation and ask about something else. Um, you can't walk away in the middle of a conversation like Fallout, but it, it reminds me of that sort of tree. Um, and... The, the things that you... In the flashpoints, the choices are, are really obvious. So don't worry about, oh, I picked this thing and this happened. That, I, that wasn't the case for me. Um, the tree, the options in the conversation trees are... They're not super long. Like, it doesn't say everything that you're about to do or say. But it gives you just enough that you're like, okay. There's, I haven't encountered any surprising moments. Because that's another concern with people. When you bring up conversation trees. Um, and aside from that... That's pretty much that's pretty much it. That's all I could think of. If you have any other questions, you could leave them in the comments below, and I will answer them uh, pretty immediately. I haven't left my desk all day, so uh, I'll be around. Um, one last thing, in terms of the game loop, basically what you're going to be doing is doing these main quests, tracking down your origins as what you are, what's going on with this game world, all the questions you probably already have from the trailers and things like that. Um, as you're going through your travel, sort of like in Skyrim, you pick up one quest and on the way pick up like ten more. It kind of happens like that in this as well. And um, and nothing, and you're going across this expansive uh, world. The map is really big, and I'm pretty impressed by it. And exploration is sort of tied into combat a lot, because these creatures are still roaming around. So you have to figure out, are you going to fight them, navigate around them? Um, it, it's interesting. So that's pretty much the gameplay loop, is just doing these quests, picking up new ones navigating the world, uh, hunting and gathering, crafting and improving yourself, and continuing through the story. Um, that's pretty much what you're going to be doing. It, there's a skill tree, so you could pick different things. There's three different skill trees that you can go down. One is focused on, on combat, one is focused on stealth, the other on hunting and gathering, uh, which reminds me a lot of Tomb Raider. Um, and, and yeah, you can go down any of those trees, you can mix and match. Uh, it, it feels like a pretty good RPG. It, it's more on the adventure side, but it's an, an action side. But it's it has those RPG elements that are definitely in there. Um, and yeah, I just I'm really, really, really enjoying this game. I'm excited for everyone to get their hands on it. 
And um, yeah, that's my early impressions. This wasn't scripted, as you could probably tell, um, unlike most of my stuff. But uh, if I did miss anything, again, please do let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.